So great to be here. I wanted to just share a little bit with you about what we're seeing uh, in the adoption of AI and machine learning uh, at AWS, both from the perspective of usage within other parts of Amazon, uh, but also uh, with the large number of external customers that we're working with in this field right now. As you might know, Amazon has been using machine learning technologies uh, pretty much since day one. I'm guessing quite a few of you will have visited a website called Amazon.com, and uh, you maybe even bought something on there. And maybe you've used the recommended for you or customers that bought this also bought this item features, which are both long-standing examples of factorization machines deployed within a service which is very widely used by Amazon retail customers. And of course, that tradition of innovation continues today with things like Amazon Go, the checkoutless, cashier-free retail experience that we recently uh, opened in Seattle and that we're in the process of expanding to other cities in North America right now. This uses machine learning-based computer vision, uh, sensor fusion in the built retail environment to enable customers to purchase without interacting with any store staff. Simply walk in, pick up the product you want, uh, walk out again, and in a few seconds, you'll get a push notification to your phone telling you what you've purchased and charging your Amazon account for whatever products you've removed. So it's a really friction-free experience for customers. Another similar example, of course, is the Amazon Echo, uh, powered by the Alexa voice service, which pioneered a new form of human-computer interaction. Uh, just use your voice, ask the system, the product, for whatever it is you want, and Alexa will figure out what you need, return answers to you fast enough for it to sound like you're interacting with a human being. Really uh, important services and products for our customers built using the same kind of technology that AWS makes available to its customers. So I just wanted to dig into uh, what some of the important characteristics are in building applications of this type. In my role, I work primarily with software developers. And software developers are highly focused on building products and apps. And in doing that in the AI and machine learning space, there are three core areas that we think are fundamentally important to software developers that are building these kinds of applications. The first is that data is the fuel that drives the ML engine for app developers of all types. And collecting data has never been easier or cheaper than it is today. Uh, thanks to hyperscale cloud platforms like AWS, it's very easy to ingest and store data at high scale, regardless of whether that data comes from a physical device in the IoT domain or it comes from an application. You want to have the ability to reliably store and aggregate data at scale with the right kind of control characteristics, and also the ability to bring in different types of processing application to that data. Uh, it might, might be machine learning, it might be more traditional analytics, but having all of your data in one location makes that really simple to do. Uh, you can also annotate data, of course, using services like the Mechanical Turk, which I think I saw on a slide uh, just a second ago, uh, providing the capability to apply human intelligence to labeling tasks. Uh, you can do that with data stored in AWS as well. The second and probably most important thing is that developers are not ubiquitous or uniform in their focus. And if you talk to software developers that are building ML applications, you'll find that they broadly fall into three different categories. Experts, like a lot of the attendees here today, are really interested in running known frameworks, often open source tools, in a highly optimized performance and cost efficient way. And for that, you want access to high performance GPU or CPU capacity with the right type of integration and simplicity to use the cloud for those purposes. Secondly, platforms, which I'll return to, return to in a second. And then finally, very simple to access application services that just make it really easy for developers to incorporate human-like characteristics that are delivered by pre-trained models directly into their apps for things like image recognition, natural language understanding, or conversational interfaces. In the area of platforms, uh, what we're focused on here is helping developers iterate really rapidly on their own models. And for this, we announced a service last year called Amazon SageMaker. It provides an end-to-end -to -end tool chain for developing, training, testing, and optimizing machine learning models, and then deploying those into production with elasticity and failure-tolerant characteristics. 
And we've made a lot of optimizations with SageMaker to improve the algorithms that are at the core of this service. Uh, simple things, well, they sound simple, like it making it possible to train on streaming data or to incrementally update a model based on new data samples that you have without having to do a complete from scratch training job. These are things that we've built into SageMaker at launch and iterated on since roughly a year ago when we launched the service. And the reason for this is ML model development is actually very similar to other software development activities. It's all about iteration. It's all about rapid experimentation, getting a new version of the model out there, tested so that you can iterate and improve upon that. And to this end, we have some very specific features within SageMaker that are intended to improve the speed of the development process. Training on a local notebook on a laptop and then uplifting that environment and using something that is exactly consistent with high performance computing resources within the cloud. And that, that encompasses the ability to scale out across large numbers of nodes, which materially improves the speed at which external developers can build models and also the speed at which developers within Amazon can achieve some of these uh, results with services like Alexa and Amazon Go. So I hope you'll take a look at other customers that have already made the decision to use AWS for their ML and AI workloads. Uh, we have tens of thousands of customers that are doing that today. And if you want to learn more about these and also more about the services that I've talked about in this quick presentation this morning, uh, you can find us on the internet, of course, at ml.aws. Thank you. <laughs>